So today I'm going to show you how to make a crochet towel topper. I don't know why, but for some reason I used to be really intimidated by these and I was recently asked to do one and I agreed and it was so easy that I decided to do a tutorial for it because uh, it's not intimidating at all or it shouldn't be and it's very simple and anybody can do it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to fold the towel. So with this snowman one, the design is on this front portion and there's not a whole lot going on on the rest of the towel. This is part of the reason why I like to fold the way that I do so that you can see this nice picture. But I also like the way that it hangs and I like that it hides the edges um, when I fold it this way. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your towel all the way and you're gonna fold it in half. <clears throat> so you fold it in half, now you're gonna take your outer edges and fold them in to meet in the middle. It's a little bulky in there. I'm gonna just smooth it out. Not that it really matters. We're gonna be moving it around, but. So you can crochet however you want. If you wanna do it like this and work into it, you can. This is how I prefer to do it. I like to have it with the seam side up and then flip it up like this. And this is how I like to work on it. Mostly I like to work on it like this because as you're working, these sides will move. They might get a little bit wonky and messed up. So I like to be able to see what these guys are doing back here when I'm moving this towel around so that it doesn't get too crazy. So I'm gonna flatten this out, get it nice and straight how you want it. And if this design on this is you want like this tree and this tree in the picture, you can just fold it a little bit less, like not all the way to the middle. You could fold it like this instead. And it would hang and it would show a little bit more of that picture on front. So for this towel, I'm just gonna do it like this right in the middle. And you're gonna pull out enough yarn so that it is four lengths or more of your towel. You do not want to run out of yarn before you get to the end because then you'll have to take this whole process out. I've done it many times, it is not fun. So one, two, three, four. So, and I've even got a little bit extra there. So we're gonna, I'm not gonna, cut it because I don't like to weave in the ends if I don't have to. So I've got just a blunt needle. Don't mind its crookedness. <laughs> it's not sharp enough to hurt me, but it's sharp enough to get through these towels. So I'm gonna hold my side up. I'm gonna go right to the edge and I'm going to push my needle through as close to the edge as I'm comfortable getting. Don't like to go too close because then I'm afraid I'm gonna stab my finger. So I'm gonna pull it all the way through, all the yarn that I pulled out of the skein. Do not wanna run out. Um, and then I'm going to crochet, or I'm going to sew, 24 stitches across this top folded edge. Now, if you want to be super accurate and super even and have perfect lines, you can measure, you can mark it with a pen, um, and then you can work into your pen marks. Uh, you can pin it, 
iron it, whatever. I personally don't care because this towel is gonna go in my kitchen and I don't think that it's super noticeable if it's slightly uneven. And I've made like a whole bunch of these and I somehow managed to get 24 every single time except for once. So probably since I said that, I won't get 24 this time magically, but we can fix it on the next round so it's not a big deal. So I'm just gonna go, have come out the back, so I'm gonna be working over the top and I'm gonna go right next to the stitch that I put in and I'm gonna try to keep them the same distance from the top and the same distance apart. It goes through pretty easily. Sometimes it's a little hard, but you can wiggle it around and move the fabric around and stick it right through. So I'm not gonna pull it all the way tight. I'm gonna leave myself a nice big loop to work with. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. You can work your loops as you go. I don't like to because it's easier for me to just keep doing the same thing and then do all the same thing at once rather than continuously stopping and doing something different every single stitch. probably use a smaller needle for this. <laughs> this was all that I had. I've lost quite a few of these needles in my couch. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so now that I'm at the middle, this is usually where I stop and start pulling my loops through. I try to do them to the middle and then I'll pull them through and then do it to the end. And I don't know if I'm gonna get through this thick piece of, oh, there it goes. So now 
you're going to take your first two loops and you're going to pull the bottom loop underneath, pull it through. And then you're going to take the side of that second loop that you pulled through that's on the outside and you're going to pull it. Not a lot. You don't want it to be too tight because you're going to use these as stitches. So you need to get your hook through there. But you're going to pull it just to get rid of some of that slack yarn. So I'm going to take that outer edge, outer side of the loop, and I'm going to pull it. Not too tight. Still want to be able to get my hook in. I'm going to go to the next one, do the same thing. Pull it through. Pull out some of the slack. I'm just going to keep working like this across until I've done all of my loops or gotten to my stopping point. And if you pull it up a little bit, you can see that you're creating your, your starting chains or crochet kind of like a top, the top of your single crochet. And you're going to work right into those. <clears throat> I pulled that one a little too tight. So now I'm going to take that loop that I pulled too tight. I'm going to take the inner, inner side of the loop and just pull it up. Because I want them to be pretty much as even as I can get them. Because you will see these. It's not super noticeable, but... If you wanted them all to be really uniform and you marked with your pen and you measured, you could always put your hook through when you pull it so that every single stitch is the same. Like this. I don't know if I can do this because I've never done it before. But... So that every single one is the same. size. I'm satisfied just pulling it with my fingers and eyeballing it. See how you're making those stitches? And the other thing is that you want to make sure that you keep these loops straight and not twisted. That makes it a little bit harder to pull them through and then it's a little harder to work into you don't really notice it, but we don't want to make it harder on ourselves. So, I've gotten to the middle now. I'm going to pull a little more out. So now I'm going to look and just make sure that this didn't slide out anymore. Sometimes when I'm working into it, it slides out and there's a gap left. And I don't want one side to be thicker than the other. So it looks like it stayed pretty even. So I'm going to leave it right like that and I'm going to continue working and I think I'm going to go right between them and then I'll do one into that next side and leave it nice and loose This is the most time consuming part of this project. Unless you hate sewing buttons, then the button would be a pain. But this is my least favorite part. The rest of it goes super quick, super easy to do. And then I think these make nice gifts. They sell really well at craft fairs, I hear. I do not do craft fairs, but everybody says that they really sell the towel toppers well.
these done. Hopefully we've got 24. My needle's all crooked. <laughs> okay. Get in there. I feel like I'm starting to get too low. No, I guess not. Actually, let's see how many I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty. Okay. Twenty-two. I would not have had to try. I would have come out with 24 exactly again. So it's just the size and the, the distance that I tend to put between these. So you're going to get, you want to get right to the edge again. Okay, now we're going to do our loops. Finish these up. Oops, too tight. Try that again. So now I'm going to take this last stitch and I'm just going to tie this off. Use my needle. Okay. So there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So this funky one back here, we're gonna have to work through too. So now we're gonna take our yarn that's still attached because we don't like to weave in ends and we're smart. And we're going to insert it into this first I'm gonna put my yarn behind my towel here. It's 
first stitch and we're going to chain two and we're going to double crochet 24 across so into each stitch so before when I said that I had done 23 instead of 24 to begin with and that there was an easy way to fix it you guessed it I literally just put an extra stitch in one of these guys and looking at this I probably would have done it in this one because it's slightly larger than the rest um, and I believe the time that I had 23 I had one that was quite a bit wider or, or looser or something that I was like yep that's where I'm putting it so no big deal you just make it work unless it's a lot then obviously you'll have to fix it so du double crochet across right into your little stitches we've just finished Once we get to the end with our 24 double crochets, we'll get that last one. We're going to chain two, turn it around, and we're going to do another row of 24 double crochet. So just go ahead and work right across again. Okay, now I've got my two rows of double crochet. I'm going to chain two, flip it around. So this row I'm going to do a decrease and then a double crochet. A decrease, double crochet all the way across. So I'll start with my decrease and my double. And that's going to leave us with 16 stitches at the end of this row. Oops. So work your decrease, your double crochet, decrease, double crochet, all the way to the other end. 16 stitches. Oops.
double crochet and then chain two turn now we're gonna do double crochets all the way across 16 double crochets all the way to the other side Was 16 double crochet now we're gonna chain two again turn and we're gonna do another row of decrease double crochet across this row is not gonna end on the proper um, stitch so we're gonna do two decreases at the last in the last so we'll decrease, double crochet, cross, and that's going to leave us with 10 stitches. And we're getting that nice little pucker that we like in these towel toppers. So we've done a, our last decrease in the double crochet decrease. So we've got two stitches left and we're going to do another decrease right in that last one. And that gives us 10. So chain two, turn, and we're going to double crochet across 10 stitches. Chain two. Okay. Now we're going to decrease on the end. We're going to double crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to decrease on the end again. Chain two, turn. And then we're going to double crochet across for four rows. So four rows of double crochet. So we'll start row one. Chain two, turn, row two, double crochet across, chain two. Double crochet across. And 
This is thir the third row. So we're going to chain two, turn, double crochet across, and this is our fourth row. So now we're going to chain two and we're going to make a buttonhole row. So we have eight stitches. We're going to double crochet three, one, two, and three. And then we're going to chain one and skip the next one and double crochet in the last four stitches. Two, three, and four. The last row we're going to chain two, double crochet, one, two, three, four, around the buttonhole, five, that's six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to finish off. So that's it. All you've got to do is weave in your ends and sew a button onto this. So I'm going to put my button about there. One, two, three, fourth row up. So row four, right in the middle. You're going to sew your button. And then all you have to do now is weave in your ends. Now your last one, and then all that will be left is the button. Oops, I'm gonna pull that too tight. That is your towel topper. There you go. Simple, not as scary as it seems, and we're all done. Sew that button on and you can put it right on your oven handle.